الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على من بعث رحمة للعالمين نبينا محمد وآله وصحبه وسلم أخي المسلم وأختي المسلمة في درس جديد نريد أن نتكلم حول موضوع أحمية الزهد في حياة الإنسان المسلم يقول الله سبحانه وتعالى المال والبنون زينة الحياة الدنيا والباقيات الصالحات خير عند ربك ثوابا وخير وخير عملا All the praise is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We praise him, we thank him subhanahu wa ta'ala. We say alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah all the time. Alhamdulillah for reason Allah made us a Muslim. Alhamdulillah for a reason Allah give us good healthy. For alhamdulillah for a reason Allah keep us alive. Many people who are not Muslim, many people who are not alive, and you can count it. All this blessing bestowed to us by Allah, we need to show Him our gratitude and our thankful to Him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is why we say Alhamdulillah all the time. Wallahi ya ikhwan, if somebody sick in the hospital or in the bed in his house, or somebody have another problem, uh, whatever problem it is, they're going to experience something in life, they know when Allah set you free from all of those things, you should say Alhamdulillah. Uh, that is why uh, 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 Arab uh, who giving an, an example to things. They said, if Allah give you good healthy, you as a person, you might not be appreciated. But people who in the in their bed, either in the house or in the hospitals, sick, they are the one who appreciate the importance of good health. Because the one who who who, who already got it, blessed with him by Allah, sometimes they don't appreciate. So regarding that, we appreciate all the time the things Allah bless us with, and we say Alhamdulillah. We offer our salutation, our prayers to our beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and his noble families and companions and those who follow his sunnah until the day of the resurrection. My brothers and sisters in Islam, today I just wanted to address another topic regarding Az-Zuhd. Az-Zuhd, not to make it complicated, is that in a Arabic language definition, which is zahad yazhad, mean to have a simple, not complicated life, to have a balanced and simple life. That what zuhd mean. Sharan, Allah urged Muslims to have a zuhd, and Prophet Sallallahu taught them in Sunnah to have a zuhd. Then in Quran and Sunnah, Zuhd is recommended by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Surah Al-Kahf, verse 45-46, Al-Malu wal-Banun, Zinatul al-Hayat al-Dunya, wal-Baqiyat al-Salihat, Khairun inda rabbika thawaban wa khairun amala. The wealth and the children are the adornment of the life of this world. But the good, righteous deeds that last 
are better with your Lord for reward and better in respect of hope. So what that mean? That mean in life, Allah has given us things to make life beautiful. One of them is children. The other one is money. But children, they not everything. Money is not everything. Let me just give you an example. Nowadays, you could see children, they don't obey their parents. When they, give you, when they give them advice, they think that they know it better. They wanted to do, go with their own mind. Beyond that, beyond that, even they turn up some of them to abuse their parents. Well, So that is why sometimes what I said regarding children, the same thing apply to money as well. Because many people, they maybe have money, but in, in terms of doing good things and spending their money to the right causes, they go the other way. So regarding all of these, Allah telling us money and children is the adornment of this life. But there is something better with the good deeds. The good deeds you are doing, that is more beneficial to you. Doesn't matter how many children, doesn't matter how rich you are, but the only thing going to benefit you out of them, if Allah help you to guide them or the money, Allah help you, you put it in a good causes. You are spending in a good causes. Then regarding that, uh, Az-Zuhd become very important after Allah giving the person everything. But before going to deep down the, the topic, let me just mention after the ayah, Hadith Amr ibn Auf al-Ansari, as recorded by Imam Bukhari in Muslim. Anna Nabiya sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ba'asa Abu Ubaida ibn al-Jarrah radiyallahu anhu ila al-Bahrain ya'ati bi jiziyatiha faqadiba min malin min al-Bahrain. Fasamayat al-Ansar bi qudumi Abi Ubaida fawafu salat al-Fajri ma'al Rasulillah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Amr bin Auf, Al-Ansari, may Allah be pleased with him. He reported that Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, sent Abu Ubaidah ibn al-Jarrah to Bahrain in the time of Prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Prophet sent him to Bahrain. To do what? Likayati bi jizyatiha. To collect the jizya. Jizya mean taxi, not zakat. Jizya is different from zakat. Zakat give by the Muslims in their businesses, in their farms. They give zakat when they spend 12 months. When they farm, when they harvest, when they cultivate things, when they harvest, then they give zakat. When they set up business for whole year, they give zakat. But this year is different. This year is a tax pay by non-Muslims who under the protection of the Muslims. Because in Bahrain at that time, the entire Bahrain was not a Muslim, but was in the protection of the Muslims, which is in the protection of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Yearly, they used to pay jizya. Then Abu Ubaidah was one of the trusted Sahaba from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi He used to send him to Bahrain to collect the jizya, the tax pays of the people of Bahrain. Salaam alaikum, we can't hear the shak. Eh? You cannot hear me? No, if you cannot hear the set, the, the check, you need to adjust the set or go off and come back in. Everyone else is hearing it, okay? Check, you can continue, please. So then, then, uh, then he went to Bahrain. So he returned from Bahrain 
with wealth. Then the Ansar got news of it and joined with the Prophet Sallallahu in Fajr prayer. Ansar, the entire Ansar, they got the news that Abu Ubaidah returned from Bahrain with wealth. Assalamu alaikum, we can't hear the shack. So, so they, they join uh, fighting. For about 10 minutes now, I can't hear a thing. Can Can you log off and come back in? Yeah, that's what you need to do. Cause everyone else is hearing, or you so, can you can put so, up your audio. Yeah, thank so you. So the Ansar got the news of it and joined with the Prophet Sallallahu in Fajr pray. فَلَمَّا صَلَّى رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ إِنْ ثَرَفَ فَتَعْرَدُ لَهُ فَتَبَطَّمَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ هِنَا رَأَهُمْ then when the Prophet ﷺ, uh, uh, concluded uh, the prayers, they stood in his way and said, and when he saw them, when the Prophet ﷺ saw them, then he, he smiled and he said, oh, I think you have heard about the arrival of Abu Ubaidah with something from Bahrain. They said, Yes, O Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Then he, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, said, Rejoice and hope for that which will please you. Then Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said this, For Wallahi, Mal Fakhru Aksha Alaikum, Walakin Aksha. أن تبسط عليكم الدنيا كما بسطت على من كان من قبلكم فتنافسوها كما تنافسوها فتهلككم كما أهلكتهم متفق عليه. When they when the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم saw that all the Ansar they come and pray Fajr with him. When he finished pray. He got up to go and they come to his way. It's like they wanted to say something to him. When he saw them in that manner, and then the Prophet smiled, and then he said, Oh, oh, I know maybe you heard something yeah, like Abu Ubaidah uh, returned from Bahrain with some wealth. They said, Oh, they said, Yes, oh, Messenger of Allah. Then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi said this. He said, by Allah, it is not poverty that I fear for you, but mm -hmm. I fear for you that this world will be opened up with its wealth for you as it was open for those to those before you. And they we with one another over it and they did and, and and as they did then eventually it will ruin them as it ruined them it is it will it will ruin you as it ruined them so when they come to pray fajr in that crowd for the news they heard from the messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam because of the wealth brought by Abu Ubaidah from Bahrain the prophet didn't say to them oh what you did is wrong no he smiled but he warned them he said to them i don't worry about poverty in your in your situation um, what i fear for you it's not poverty. It's not that what I fear for you. But I'm worried about this wealth, this world of wealth has been opened up to you. As is opened up to those before you. And they compared with it. 
and he's destroyed them or he's ruined them, then when you do that, it's going to ruin you as it ruined them before. What that mean? We learn from these hadiths in terms of uh, the religious angle that poverty or poverty as a, an individual person, let's say somebody who not rich, somebody who, who is not rich or nation who is not rich is not as dangerous at its influence for this reason. Because you as an individual or as a country, some country, they're not rich. So, but that is not the, it's not the problem. But the problem is that what we see, what richness can do to someone, what richness can do to someone, what power and richness can do to a country in terms of oppression and other things. So this is what Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam worried about us. So then in this, in this hadith, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam cautioned his ummah against the consequences of, 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 of abundance of wealth and warn his followers to save themselves from its evil. Because always, richness, if you're not humble, if you don't have a zod, can ruin you and ruin others next to you. So that is why the Prophet Wasallam warned his ummah and say, I'm not worried about, my fear is not poverty. But my fear is the dunya has been given to you, then it's going to ruin you as it ruined those before you. We witness today, we witness today that all his fears have come true. All the prophet fears has come true. Because if you look at Muslim situation, you're going to learn that really, really is scary. So, so that is why humbleness and zod is very important for the life of a Muslim person. My brothers and sisters in Islam, in this life, we work very hard to secure our self-provision. Something gonna make us have a good life to be able to to have a house to live to pay our bills to do other things but muslim person doesn't matter how they reach or how they poor as long that doesn't take their dignity away from them it's not a problem because the the, the the richest one and the poorest one at the end of the day they go into the same direction the ending is going to be the same ending that is why anas radiallahu anhu reported from the messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said if one of you die because prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam always teaching us teaches us to be humble to prepare ourselves for here after all the time so this is what prophet used to do all the time. This had this report uh, reported by Anas radiallahu anhu. The prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Yattabi'u al-mayt thalatha, ahluhu wa maluhu wa amaluhu, fa yarji'u ithnani wa yabqa thalath. Yarji'u ahlu wa maluhu wa yabqa amaluhu muttafaqun alayhi." This had this recorded by Imam Bukhari and Muslim. The prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said as reported by Anas Radiallahu anhu, the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, three things follow the dead person. Member of his family, his property, and his deeds. Then he said, the two will return. The two will return. He's wealthy, 
and his family, they will return. When they walk him out to the cemetery, they will return because he's going to leave left behind his wealthy and their family. When they bury him, they return home. Then he left. He going to be left with what, 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 what with one thing, if he did what he was doing. Then doesn't matter how rich we are or how poor we are, but our performance is very important. The good things we are doing, the good things we are we are doing, because that is the thing gonna benefit us from here and from the hereafter. So because the good things, that is the one going to remain. That is why in the life of the graves, Hayat Barzaghir, nothing, nothing can help anyone accept the good deed they was doing in this life. We have to prepare for that. You be humble in terms of not to forget that after this life, there is another life. That is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala drawing our attention to tell us, look at the sky, look at the universe, look at the earth. The one who created this is the one who created tomorrow. yanzuruna ilal ibili wa ilal samai rufi'at wa ilal jibali nusibat wa ilal ardi He said, let them look at the sky. How Allah built it. Or look at the camels, how Allah created them. And the sky, how, how Allah built it. And the, the earth, the way Allah set up the earth and make it in this way. And the mountains in this earth and everything. So when you look at this, so you cannot live in denial to ask whether tomorrow exists or doesn't exist. Because the one who created all of these is the one who created tomorrow. Then you know in hereafter, there is a Jannah, there is a paradise. And here in, in hereafter, there is no work, there is no job. It's a place of payment. It's a place of retirement. You're not going to go to work for the rest of you live as you like. You have whatever you like. If Allah bless you and guarantee you Al-Jannah, may Allah include us from those whom he going to guarantee Al-Jannah. Then in a humble life we're addressing that make you have a balanced life. You don't run behind. You don't run after wealthy. After dunya and neglect, neglect the relationship between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You don't do that. You don't do that because when you do that, you're going to be one of the losers. So for that reason, one day, as reported by Sa Sahal ibn Sa'ad as Sa'i radiyallahu anhu as Sa'idi radiyallahu anhu qala jaa rajulun ila nabi sallallahu alayhi wasallam faqala ya rasulallah ya rasulallah dullani ala amalin idha amaltuhu ahabbani Allah wa ahabbani an-nas an Sahal ibn Sa'id an Sahal ibn Sa'ad as Sa'idi radiyallahu anhu qala jaa rajulun ila nabi sallallahu alayhi wasallam fa qala ya rasulallah dullani ala amalin idha amiltuhu ahabbani Allah wa ahabbani an-nas fa qala sallallahu alayhi wasallam izhadid dunya yuhibbuka Allah wa azhad fi ma aidin nas Yuhibukanas. So this is a hadith regarding Zuhd. 
Sahal ibn Sa'ad al-Sa'idi reported from the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said, one day, a man came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and said to him, O messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, guide me to a such an action which if I do, Allah will love me and people will love me as well. You see, he, this man came to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Then he requested from him. Then he said, O Messenger of Allah, guide me to an action, such an action. When I do, then Allah going to love me, then people going to love me as well. Then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said to him, have no desire of this world, Allah will love you. Is had dunya, you Allah. Is had a dunya, you Allah. Have no desire in this world, Allah will love you. Meaning, have no desire in this world, Allah will love you. That doesn't mean you're not going to go to work. That doesn't mean you're going to lock up yourself into your room. You say, I have nothing to do with the dunya. That is wrong. That doesn't mean that. Doesn't mean that. That doesn't mean also you say, oh, I don't want anything about the dunya. I'm going to fast everything every day for the rest of my life and praying at night for the rest of my life. It doesn't mean that. Have no desire in this world. Allah will love you. Mean, you're going to go to work. You're going to do your prayers. You're going to pay your, your, your you're going to give zakat. You're going to go to hajj. You're going to fast holy months of Ramadan. But you're going to do it in a very simple and humble way. Your dunya activity does not drive you away from Allah, Allah's obligation. So then when you do that, then you make yourself and you have humble and simple life. When you do that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala going to love you. Let me tell you the story of three people who come to the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, to the, to the family household of messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and ask the routine of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the routine, everyday routine, and during the night time. When Umul Mu'minin, the mother of believers Aisha, explained to them, the routine of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when they left, one of them say, oh, I'm going to, to fast every day for the rest of my life. I'm not going to break my fast. Every day I'm in Ramadan. The other one said, I have nothing to do with my wife. So I'm going to stay away from my wife and pray at, at night. So, in this, in this uh, 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 idea they got in their mind, they start implementing it. Let me give you the story of Salman al-Farisi and Abu Darda. Abu Darda was uh, fasting during the day and pray at night. His wife, no way. Until one day, Salman visited Abu Darda in his house. When he visited him, uh, Umm Darda, Abu Darda, wife, told him that, oh, your friend, because he, he find her in a situation like 
untidy, untidy. Because many women, when their husband doesn't look at them and in certain way, then they start feeling, oh, 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 I'm not good enough. That is the feeling they're having. I'm not good enough. That is why this happening. That start breaking their heart and then they start leaving themselves untidy, which is not good. So Salman found him, her in that situation. And he asked, he said to him, oh, he replied to, to him, oh, your brother doesn't have anything to do with his family. He said, huh? He said, yes. Oh, yes. You better talk to him. Then Salman come to the house. Abu Darda welcome him. Then they spend the night. When they spend the night, before the night goes, then Abu Darda get up. And then Salman said to him, where are you going? He said, I'm going to do my nawafil. He said, no. No. It's, it's not the time yet. Go back. Go back and sleep until the time come. And then until like 45 minutes or one hour left from Fajr. Then they, they too got up, take their wudu, and do the nawafil. In the morning, Abu Darda wife prepare the breakfast. Then Abu Darda brought it to, to Salman. He said, oh, eat. I'm fasting. He said, no. I am a guest. I am a visitor. Come to visit you. You say you're fasting? I'm not eating. You eat with me? Oh, I'm not eating. So then he broke his fast and eat with him. And that is the right thing to do. Then after two days, three days, as minimum to host someone in Islam, then Abu Darda, uh, Salman left. When he left, he went to the messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, explained to him the situation. Then the Prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, asked Salman to invite Abu Darda. They went to the messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And uh, the Prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, told him, I heard what your, what your brother said regarding what you're doing at home. But the Prophet Sallallahu said to him, Inna li nafsika alayka haq, wa inna li badanika alayka haq, wa inna li ahlika alayka haq, wa inna li rabbika alayka haq, fa'ati kulla si haqin haqqa. The Prophet Sallallahu told him that your Lord has a right over you and your soul has a right over you and your body and your wife has a right over you each of them give them their right mean zuhud doesn't mean you say i'm going to cut off everything that is wrong that is not the zuhud we're talking about here zuhud makes someone to have a Balanced life, humble life, simple life. Life does not drive him to extremism. Life doesn't drive him to neglect the obligation between him and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, between him and his family, between him and himself as a person, between him and, and others. Make him to have a simple and humble and balance life. Meaning the middle course of life. Wasat al Hayat al Wasatiya. That Hayat al Wasatiya mentioned in the Quran as Allah said, Wakasalika ja al Nakum Ummatan Wasata. For this reason we make you a middle course of nation, a balanced nation. Oh, a nation doesn't go extremism a nation doesn't neglect his obligation a nation 
who just balance and go in the middle course. So my brothers and sisters in Islam. Then the zuhd we are addressing today doesn't mean go to extremism, but mean to have a simple and balanced life. Then the Prophet Sallallahu said to him, to this man, have no desire for this world, Allah will love you. Then when you have this type of life, then Allah is going to love you because you neglected nothing, but you make yourself humble and simple. Then, then the Prophet Sallallahu added and say, was that Fima Aydinas, Yuhibukanas, have no desire for what people possess, then the people will love you. Imagine a rich person, whatever Allah has given them, but you don't you don't have desire in that thing, but you wish them good. You wish you wish them to enjoy it. You don't feel envy or jealousy or anything to, toward of them. They know you wish them good, you love them for the sake of Allah, Wallahi, they're going to love you, whether he or she. So the Prophet said to him, have no desire for what people possess, the people going to love you. From the zuhd, from the zuhd, that what people possess doesn't matter how excellent it is, but you don't put your eye on it. You wish them to enjoy it, to have it. You don't have anything inside you against them. This is something is very important something unique that is why my brothers and sisters in islam you see here 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 the chest what is harbor what the chest harbor inside these these this piece of meat inside here to clean it up is very important it's very important we have to work very hard make sure we polish it up all the time, all the time, all the time. It's like just what affecting you outside may affect you inside all the time. If I give you an example, say, you bathing all the time. You bathing all the time. So if you sit down two days, three days, one week, you don't bath. Any one of us who did it start stinking. Our heart inside is the same thing. We have to continue to polish it up. That is why we're making wudu to pray five times a day. Keep making istighfar all the time. Istighfar non-stop. Istighfar non-stop. Subhanallah wa bihamdi, subhanallah al-azim, non-stop. When you finish with this, you log into the other one. La ilaha illallah non-stop when you you know feel that you do this for quite some time you stop you carry on the other one in these Allah be zikrillah tatma in qulub in these you making zikr you remembering Allah for entire your life then Allah bring peace and tranquility in your heart and your mind May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help all of us to achieve this. Because this is the highest goal any one of us could achieve in this life. It be inanul qalb. Peaceful heart. A heart with, you know, uh, 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 khair, with salam. Heart with peace and tranquility. This is what we're asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then my brothers, and sisters in Islam. A zuhd is that you limit your running after this dunya 
then you don't neglect your obligations, then also you have no desire in terms of what people possess, then when you do that, Allah going to love you and people going to love you. When Prophet Sallallahu addressed things like this, someone in one time asked him, like, oh, then if some, 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 one of us wanted to have nice shoe, nice dress, nice watch, this and that, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi said, that is not a problem. You can have your nice shoe. You can have your nice clothes. You wear it. But that doesn't take you away from being humble. But when you have all of that, you feel arrogant, then the Prophet ﷺ said, Al-Kibar, huwa batarul haq wa kamtun nas. He said, what take a zuhd away from you is arrogancy. So arrogancy is not putting us putting on nice clothes or nice shoe. That doesn't show the sign of arrogance. You can have nicest clothes, nicest shoe, nicest watch, but humble. But the Prophet Sallallahu pacifically identify what take zuhd away from us. Then he said, Al Kibaru Batarul Haq wa Kamtun Nas. Arrogancy is that rejecting the truth. Then look up and down people. When you reject the truth, when you look up and down people, you don't have zuhd at all. Then zuhd taken away from you. So that is why humbleness is far from it. So that is why my brothers and sisters in Islam, to be humble, it's very important. Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu. Just give you an example in the time of the Prophet. He said, Ra'aytu sabi'ina min ahli suffa ma minhum rajulun alayhi rida imma idhar wa imma kitha qad rabatu fi anaqim fa minha ma yabluku nisf saqain wa minha ma yabluku al-ka'bain فيجمعه بيده كراهة أن يرى أو أن ترى عورته رواه البخاري. so أبو هريرة رضي الله عنه he said I saw seventy of seventy people of of the sufa أهل السفة and one of them had a clock that had either a lower garment or a blanket uh, where sometimes suspended from the knee, like you have a blanket from your knee here, or uh, reach halfway, or the, the clothes you have reach halfway of your body. You know? So halfway down, to the to the legs and some of them the uncles like the what they have just reach their uncles that is why umar ibn al-khattab radiallahu anhu he was a tall man he was a tall man his clothes cannot cover him properly he borrow his son abdullah ibn umar piece of kisa then he added up to his one to be able to cover him up properly. Look at their situation. But that never take their dignity away from them. Zuhdiya Ikhwan make you a better person. When you humble, humbleness gonna make you, you become a better person. You're gonna be far from arrogancy and other symptoms. Killing Muslims. May Allah save us from that, Ya Arham Rahimin, may Allah store in us humbleness. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala store in our hearts and our minds 
zuhd and iman until we meet him so ahlu sufa i mentioned here is the companions of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam who were poor ahlu sufa was very poor and they used to restore uh, uh, they used to live uh, 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 at, the, uh, at the, the shed of uh, uh, the shady place at the back of the masjid of the Prophet ﷺ in Madinat al Munawwara. You know, the back of the masjid, they used to live there in that time. So they were very poor and uh, uh, they were living a very humble life, but never drive them away from their duty and obligation son of Islam. So just uh, my brothers and sisters in Islam, so I'm gonna stop here today, but just to say that Zuhd, which is humble and have a humble life, is very important for the life of the Muslims. So what we're experiencing now, if you have a humble life, when things, problems like this come, you're not gonna suffer a lot from it because you get used to have a normal and simple life. So that is why Muslim life, no matter what, whatever the situation, the circumstances, they're going to be able to cope, they're going to be able to survive. May Allah make us and help us survive from all these calamities, striking, and then has not finished yet. You have to expect a lot of calamities going to come. So you have to prepare and to be humble and to be able to be handle them. Bi iznillah ta'ala. Wa akhiru da'wana an alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin wa sallillahu wa sallim ala nabina muhammadin wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam wa salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaykum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Barakallahu fiqh, Shaykh. Okay. Brother here, Shaykh Yusuf is here. Yeah. Salamu alaykum, Shaykh. Can you unmute yourself, Shaykh? Wa alaykum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, Shaykh. Masha'Allah. Salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi. Sayyidana. Masha'Allah. Kaif umorak ya, Shaykh? Wallahi, alhamdulillah. Kaif halukum? Alhamdulillah, azzakum Allah. Wa kaif al-bilad? Amin wa iyaakum, ya akhi. Amin wa iyaakum, ya akhi. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. Kullu wahid bi khair, alhamdulillah. Wa kaif al-masjid? Wa kaif al-masjid? Alhamdulillah bi khair. Al-a'mal kulluha jari ala ma yuramu, alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. Masha'Allah, masha'Allah. Allah, Allah, may Allah support you, support us. Amin, amin, amin. May Allah make this humble work for the sake of Allah and for the sake of the Muslims, may Allah put that in your hasanat yawm al-qiyamah. Amin ya kareem. Put that in your hasanat yawm al-qiyamah ya akhi. Wa jazakum Allah khairan ya akhi. Wallahi, iza iza min al-farah wa sa'ada an tara akuka ya'mal yaqum bihada al-amal al-jad yani. يعزنا نحن جميعا يا أخي. الله يبارك فيك الله يبارك فيك. فجزاكم الله خيرا فجزاكم الله خيرا. آمين وياكم آمين يا شيخي. السلام عليكم ورحمة الله الحمد لله. وعليكم السلام ورحمة الله وبركاته. Don't forget don't forget to log off yeah. Yeah, I'm logging. I'm log. I'm logging off. Okay. Okay. Ma sha Allah. Brothers and sisters, my dear beloved yeah. um, brother and uncle host, um, thank you very much for having me this um, evening. I'm sorry, the the light has just um, electricity gone. Khalas, <laughs> shall I? Whenever it comes back, I will. Okay. <laughs> what I'm going to do? Yeah, 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 yeah. What I'm going to do? I'm going to put um, just an image. You wouldn't see me, shall I? Until the light comes, shall I? So. Um, we you will just focus on the the, the audio until when oh, well, yeah, okay, um, so check. let's check okay, like that can you see yeah, yeah. that's fine okay. check we can see you ah, okay 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 yeah it's okay All right. yeah, yeah. okay that's fine um so shall i start now yeah yeah bismillah check bismillah a'udhu billahi minash shaitani wal rajim bismillah ar rahman ar rahim wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah muhammad ibn abdullah wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ومن تبعوا بلسان لا يمدين ما درس في تبو برادرز وسيسز ولا في يوا السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته من الله سبحانه وتعالى أكسبت أم أوديدز أن أول 
um, our actions that we do. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it be sincerely for his own sake. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant all of us ikhlas and make Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, subhanahu wa ta'ala make our last days be the happiest days of our life to meet him here, Arham ar Rahimin. And brothers and sisters, our topic is very, very important this evening or tonight. Um, our topic tonight, be it in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, how to gain a sound heart, how to achieve a sound heart. Very, very important for myself and you all. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala informed us in the Quran, fi kitabi, أنه لن ينجو في الآخرة إلا من سلمت قلوبهم. Allah mentioned in his book that no one will save يوم القيامة. Get this right. I want us to get the foundation, the basic here, right. If we understand its concepts, then we will able to find our way towards the right destination. When preparing to travel, when you have all what it takes for your journey, it will enable you to arrive at your destination on time or in time rather, and with all um, means that you have to, whatever possessions actually you have to have with you while embarking on the journey. So here, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran, he informed us in the Quran, and I'm going to tell you the ayah, is Surah Shu'ara, verse 87 to 89. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he informed us in the Quran that, لَنْ يَنْجُوا, meaning never, ever, would any one of us save يوم القيامة from his punishments except men, Salimat Ulubuhum, except those who have, right, except those who have hearts that are sound, sound hearts. Call Allah Ta'ala, Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala mentioned in Surah Shu'ara, Hakian and Dua Ibrahim. He was informing myself and you about the supplication, the Dua of Ibrahim alayhi salam. The dua of Ibrahim alayhi salam, who is the Khalilullah, the friend of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala called Ibrahim Khalilullah. He said Ibrahim is a friend to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ya Allah. Because of the Tawheed. Because of this specific topic we're going to talk about today. Allah said, Ibrahim supplicated to Allah, he said, Wala tukhzini, said, Oh Allah, do not disgrace me. Do not humiliate me. Yawma yuba'athun, the day of resurrection, the day in which we will be raised from our graves. Ufatan, yeah, Ufatan, Uratan, Ghurla, Ufatan, barefooted. Uratan, naked, uncircumcised. Ghurla, uncircumcised. That day, Ibrahim said, Ya Rabb, wala tukhzini. Please Allah, do not humiliate me, do not disgrace me. Yawma yuba'athun, the day of resurrection. Because that day, he said, Yawma, the day, la yanfa'u mal. The day in which your wealth, your money, will not benefit you. The day when money, wealth, money, will be of no benefit to mankind. Wala banun. No children, our children, will benefit us that day. Illa except. Ah, uh, that is it. Illa except. Man at Allah, for he or she who comes to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be qalbin, with a heart salim, a tranquil heart, a sound heart. No one will save that day, Allah said. Illa man at Allah, except he who comes to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be qalbin salim, 
with a sound heart. A sound heart. What is the Qalbun Salim? Before we get into that, that is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala explain in the Quran about the attributes, right? the characteristics as well of that sound heart. One of the ayah, when we have sessions like this, when we have gathering of knowledge or dhikr, remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we do not just sit here listening to the words of Allah like that. The essence is not for you to turn your TV or your Zoom and then you keep, you, you leave it there just to see a sheikh or just to hear the voice of a sheikh, just to hear the voice, the, the ayat, then you are not paying attention now. The essence of getting involved in this is to learn is to change your way of life to that which is much more better if you are good you become better if someone who is on the wrong path this is the way for their own life to completely change to that which is better allah said in surah anfal verse 2 to 3 he said innamal mu'minun he said, indeed, the true believers, the true believers, those are the ones or the believers or the people when the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioned, when Allah's name is mentioned to them, their hearts is filled with the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, their hearts are shaken out of the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَإِذَا تُلِيَتْ عَلَيْهِمْ آيَاتُ When they rehearse the verses, the ayat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to them, زَادَتْهُمْ إِيمَانًا They do not just listen to the words of Allah, but it increases them iman. وَعَلَى رَبِّهِمْ يَتَوَكَّلُونَ they put their trust in the sight or in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. These are the true believers, my dear beloved brothers and sisters in the deen. Their hearts are shaken out of the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And these are the people who admonish one another. And they perform salah, establish a regular salah. Allah said, الَّذِينَ يُقِيمُونَ salah." They establish regular prayers. And they spend that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala provided them. So, in the hadith, the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, according to Nu'man ibn Bashir, radiallahu an, he said, the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, I heard the message of Allah, may the peace and blessings be upon Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala be upon him, saying, Ala wa inna fil jasadi mudra. He said, in the body, our body, there is a portion, a portion of flesh, a portion in our body, inside us, inside the human being. He said that portion, if the solo heads, if that portion is sound, if that portion is good, if that portion is excellent, al kullu, then the whole body will be good. If that portion in your body, which we are talking about tonight, Talking about today, if that portion in you is good, then you are a good person. If that portion in you, listening to the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you the believer or you the human being, if that portion in you is good, then you are a good person to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If that portion, portion in you is, you know, not good, is bad, 
is not sound, then you are not sound. You will not be a good person to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's what the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said. And what is that sound? I mean, passion. That passion is ala wa hiya al qalb. The Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa said, it is the heart. Allah. The heart. If your heart is good, then you'll be good. If your heart is ill, sick, then you are a sick person. You need to get a cure for it. You need to get a cure. Let me make this clear to myself and you all, my dear beloved brothers and sisters, fathers as well as mothers in the deen. At-tariq ila Allah, the path to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Get this right, yeah? <laughs> the path to Allah, the road to Allah, the bridge to Allah. For example, if you want to go to, in London, let's say where you are, our center, southwest, you want to go to North London, you have a road, the map, you follow that road. And for as long as you've understood, you've learned the dimension, the direction towards your destination, then it will be easier, quicker for you to reach your destination. Now, Allah, as a believer, Allah is our destination. We run towards Him. The road to Al Jannah, to Allah, La Nasir Alayhi Bil Aqdam. We do not travel to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by feet, on our feet, by cars, by aeroplanes, helicopters, trains, no. We do not travel to Al Jannah, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bila aqdam, on our feet, by feet, by, by train, whatever. How do we travel to Allah? How do we get to Al Jannah? Innama nasiru alayhi bil qulub. We travel to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with our hearts. With our hearts. That's why the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned, he said, Inna Allah la yandur ila suwarikum. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not look at your heart. I mean, sorry, at your picture. How handsome or beautiful you are. It does not matter to Allah. It doesn't matter. It doesn't look at how beautiful you are. And it doesn't look at how, you know, huge you are and how wealthy you are. It looks at Kulubikum. It looks at your heart, what you have in your heart, the thoughts, the near, the intention, and it looks at your deeds, and all deeds to Allah will be accepted according to your intention. That's why the Rasul Wasallam said, Inna amal Allah will accept your actions, your deeds, according to your intention. This hurts. No one knows what you have right now inside you, brothers and sisters, in terms of your thoughts. For Allah and for your, for your fellow human beings, no one knows. Only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Alimun bidhati sudur. Allah knows what is in your mind, in your heart. He knows what is here, your chest, your heart. This is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, according to Ibrahim, when he made his dua, he said, يَوْمَ لَا يَنْفَعُ مَالُ وَلَا بَنُونِ إِلَّا مَنْ أَتَ اللَّهَ بِقَلْبٍ سَلِيمٍ 
the day when your wealth will not benefit you. Know your children will be of help to you. Except he who comes to Allah with a sound heart, a tranquil mind, a tranquil heart. Another ayah, Surah Safat, verse 84 to 83 to 44, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَإِنَّ مِنْ شِيَعَتِهِ لَا إِبْرَاهِيمِ إِذْ جَاءَ بِرَبَّهُ بِقَلْبٍ سَلِيمٍ Ibrahim alayhi salam, he came to Allah, he met his Lord with a tranquil heart. And tranquil heart, ayyuhal ahibba, the tranquil heart, tranquil heart is the heart that does not have shirk. It's far distance away from shirk. The heart that is filled with tawheed, the oneness of Allah. Akhi wa ukhti. My dear beloved brother and sister in the deen, ummi wa abi. My dear beloved father and mother in the deen, umdur ila nafsik. Look at yourself. Umdur ila makhluqat Allah. Look at the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. فَإِذَا تَوَقَّفْتَ عَلَيْهَا If you actually ponder and contemplate over the signs, the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you will know how powerful, how mighty your Lord is. Allah. Allah said, إِنَّ فِي خَلُقِ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ وَاخْتِلَافِ اللَّيْلِ وَالنَّهَارِ He said, in the creation, of the skies above and the earth below, and the alteration of the night and the day. La ayat, these are clear signs. The ul al albab for people of understanding. Alladina yathkurun Allah. Those who remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, qiyaman wa qu'uda. While standing and sitting, they remember Allah. Wa ala junubihim. Even in the nights while they are in bed, they remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَيَتَفَكَّرُونَ فِي خَلْقِ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ They remember, they ponder over the creation of the seven skies above and the earth below. And they say, رَبَّنَا O Allah, مَا خَلَقْتَ هَذَا بَاتِلَ Allah, you did not create this out of falsehood, no. You did not create this baselessly, no. You created this on top of the surface of truth. The foundation of truth. And that truth is La ilaha illallah. There is no God but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Look at yourself. How Allah created you. Hal ata ala li insan. Heenum min ad dahar. Lam yakun shay'an madhkura. Has he come to you yet? The news about yourself, your creation. You were nowhere to be found. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, I created you. You became something. This is Allah. There is no God but Allah. The tawheed, the heart has to be free, free from shirk. That's the first thing. That's how, what, how a sound heart is. The sound heart that meets Allah. And I will inherit Al Jannah. May Allah make us be amongst the dwellers of Al Jannah, Ya Arhamar Rahimin. That sound heart is free from shirk. That heart testifies that, na'bud. Only you, Allah, we worship. You alone we seek help from. You alone. If Allah helps you, فَلَا غَالِبَ لَكُمْ No one will defeat you. وَإِنْ يَخْذُلُكُمْ If Allah humiliates you, فَمَنْ ذَا الَّذِي يَنْصُرُكُمْ مِنْ بَعْدِي Allah said, who else will grant you prosperity, will grant you help, will grant you victory besides him? Who else? No one. وَعَلَى اللَّهِ فَلِيَتَوَكَّلِ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ Upon Allah, all true believers 
must put their trust. Trust Allah. Put your trust in Him. Depend upon Allah. Connect the door between you and Allah. Connect the bond between you and Allah. Open the door, your door, to Allah. Then Allah will open His doors. Call upon Him and He will answer to your call. Walk towards Him and He will hasten a rush towards you. Cry to Him and He will give you everything in abundance. Seek forgiveness in Allah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bring down his provisions in abundance. He said, فَقُلْتُ اسْتَغْفِرُوا رَبَّكُمْ إِنَّهُ كَانَ غَفَارًا Allah said, seek refuge, seek forgiveness. Istighfar, ask him for forgiveness. Say, astaghfirullah. By doing so, your Lord is a forgiving God. He will forgive you. Shirk. Inna Allah la yaghfir an yushrika bi. Your Lord, my God, who is the one God, uh, the only God. And that's why Allah said in the Quran, look at the ayah, yeah? listen to this beautiful ayah. He said, لَوْ كَانَ فِيهِمَا آلِهَةٌ إِلَّا اللَّهِ لَفَسَدَتَا He said, if there was any other God, if there were any other gods besides Allah, the earth and the sky would have crushed and demolished. Because they will clash. Yeah. My mother, uh, grandmother and mothers, they used to say to me, they said the teeth and tongue, they clash. We as human beings, the parents and children, they have that clash, clash in a sense. Maybe they do something wrong. They want to correct, correct them. They make mistakes and etc. Your wife and husband, you have misunderstanding. There will always be somehow, you know, some hungle and tongue around that you learn along the line. There will always be that clash that you have understanding between yourself, amongst yourselves. But when it comes to Allah, Allah said, if there were any other God besides Allah, the sky above and the earth below, la fasadatha, would have crumbled, would have crushed. Khalas. For subhanallah. Glory be to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. See, your Lord is a forgiving God. He said, in Allah, Allah, the God that we serve, la yaghfir an yushraka bi. He does not forgive anyone who commits shirk. They have those meaningful rings. Yeah, they put them, call them Sarah ring. In my language, we call it Sarah ring, charity ring. They give it to you, they said, means of protection. In fact, it's a connection of the jinn, the devil, that controls you and controls your life. They have those different clothes they put on. It's means of bad luck and curse for ye. They have those mini meaningful beads by their waist or rope. I'm not saying it's haram to have beads. It's good. It's not a problem for women. But if you hang them on ye as means of protection, Allah said, لا يغفر أن يشرك بي. He said he does not forgive anyone who commits that shirk. You know, I was told yesterday, it's terrible. Yesterday, I was told by my family, one of my family, she said that those masquerade, yeah, we call them devil here. Those who put on masquerade things, they go and dance like that. They did not show outside is devil that you see, and inside is human being. They are inside them. They said one of them, after they put on those clothes, those dressing devil thing, whatever, masquerade, immediately while dancing, they are beating, sang, singing for that person. And Malik al came and took his life. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. 
Imagine the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi said, Man aasha ala shay. Whosoever live upon something, mata alayhi, he or she will die upon it. Woman mata ala shay. And he who died upon, upon something, that particular thing, bu'itha alayhi yawm al qiyamah. He will be raised with this yawm al qiyamah. Imagine that man who died in that masquerade or devil, whatever you call it. He will come Yom Al Qiyamah dancing with the devil, following Shaitan. Shirk. The shirk is divided into two Al Akbar wal Asghar, the major shirk. So bow down to an idol. So believe in the, the, the words or the sayings of the soothsayer, prediction, Juju man. You know what I'm talking about? So believe in the Sabbath and all those things. Today, this is means of protection. It protects you. A shirk. Remove it. Remove it from your door. Remove it wherever it is. Put your trust in Allah. You serve only Allah, no one else. If that's your life and you live and die upon it, where you look like Allah said He will not forgive you. He said, Whatsoever sin you commit between you and Allah, He will forgive you if He wish, wishes. Anyone who dies upon shirk, commits shirk, Allah said, That person is in a manifest, manifest loss. Another ayah. Allah said, Al-Jannah become a haram for him. That the greatest one, it takes one out of the fold of the deen. And the second, which is the minor shirk, which is riya, showing off. Want to show off. So do things. So preach. So read Quran. So give sadaqah. So look after the orphans. So whatever it is, they do it to please mankind. They do not do it to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah distance us away from that. Because that destroys all your deeds. Shirk al-Asghar. The Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi said, this is what I'm afraid of for my ummah. The Shirk al-Asghar. It destroys their deeds. Brothers and sisters, we will continue bi Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with a sound heart. How to gain a sound heart. Because the broad topic bi Allah. Sessions bi Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I will not go beyond this Shall I stop here? For anyone who have question, um, and ask comments, whatever it is, inshallah. So you we come on board, inshallah. So we go through um, your questions briefly and quickly, inshallah. Zakala <laughs> Khari. Now I'm the host. I see you. You've been um, your, your skin has been. Um, anyone there? Losing your skin has been full, but it's okay. We can still hear you. That's fine. Yeah, uh, is there a question that, that um, you want to ask Sheikh in relation to what you just mentioned? Have I lost my hosts or? No, no, no. Can you hear me, Sheikh? Can you hear us? Sheikh, can you hear me? Salam alaikum, Sheikh. Hello. Yeah, we can hear you. We can hear you, Sheikh. Can you hear us? Ah. Are you with me? Yes. Yeah, we're still with you, Shaq. Can you hear us? What up, Duali? Nam, can you hear me? <laughs> no, I, I suppose you cannot hear me. Um, I think here. Hello. The... Shaq, we can hear you. Waalaikum. Shaq. Uh... Well, 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 alaikum salam. Let me let me give my Call on, on what's yeah, on give now. me the call. Give me the call. Yeah. Hello. Okay, he's just logged out. I'll just tell him to log back. Sorry yeah. about that. Yeah. I can hear you now. Okay. Yeah, I can hear you now. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so let's oh, just yeah. go straight to questions. Um, 
if you've got a question, please do put your hands up, uh, hand up, or uh, just write your answer, uh, sorry, your question on the chat, and then we can read it out. Uh, there's, the one, there's one already, uh, but, uh, can you read it? Um, I think, no, I think that's, that's no, you could see that, I kind of see that, because you're okay. the host. Okay, uh, uh, there's one on the uh, chat check, it says, Yeah. so if you change your ways, will Allah forgive you? Yeah, absolutely. Our Lord is a forgiving God. If you change your ways, and you purify the heart from shirk and the other stuff that we're going to talk about, the next session, Allah will forgive you because he's a forgiving God. He said, Whosoever commits sin, make mistakes or wrong their souls, and then they turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and seek forgiveness, they will find their Lord to be a forgiving God that will forgive them, inshallah. We hope and pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Oh, man. I mean, Yashak, can you hear us? Yeah, I can hear. I can hear you. Okay. I think we lost you for a second there. Ah, uh, okay. Okay, that's fine. Um, uh, did you? Sorry, did you finish answering that question? Yeah, yeah. Um, indeed, I said Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is a forgiving God. He said, whosoever commits sins or wrong their souls and they seek forgiveness they decide to change their ways of their way of life allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive them may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive each and every one of us allah knows best yeah. uh we got uh brother abu bakar next assalamu alaikum brother abu bakar can you hear us assalamu alaikum wa alaikum assalam wa brother abu bakar Sheikh, thank you so much you welcome. Thank you for this beautiful explanation and also the host. We thank everybody. And we also that are listening. Uh Sheikh, I uh, just want you to give me some understanding on because God says in Surah 2, Surah 2, 238, verse 238, it says God the prayers speakly, especially the middle prayers, which is hardship. I want you to throw a small light on that, please. Yeah, Asr is very, very important. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speak of that in the Quran when he said that you got the prayer was Salatul Wusta and also the middle prayer, which is Suratul Asr. I mean Salatul Asr. Salatul Asr, this is a time when the angels they come, they change shifts. You would love myself and all of you love, right? The angels to go and meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with positive news about you. Those who came place. Um, the angels who are living with all your deeds, mashallah, they will meet you praying. And while they are living, you, you are also worshiping, praying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, glorifying Allah. And that is very, very important. That is why wherever we are, we always got that prayer. Even when it comes to Surah Al-Asr, the Mufassirin, some of them said, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Wal Asr, they refer to Surah Salatul Asr as well. Not only the time, but Salatul Asr, that particular time. It's very, very important. Thank you, Sheikh. Thank you. Yes, oh, yeah. um, if Allah accepts our prayers, all our deeds will be accepted. Allah knows best. Briefly now, before we go. Thank you, Sheikh. Welcome. Um, okay. um, Sister Samia has got a quick question. Uh, you can unmute yourself, she says, Samia. Assalamualaikum. Alaikum salam wa salam wa barakatuh. Alaikum salam. Yeah, Shaq Yusuf. Um, you yeah. know, um, some individuals, they have soft hearts, while others have yeah. hard hearts, yeah? And yeah, well, okay. In such situation, the one with soft heart are those who are able to... Um, abide by Allah's law and become believers, whereby those with hard hearts are very hard to believe or follow Allah's saints. Um, in that kind of aspect, would you say is Allah's way of creation, or is it? Would you say that is the way of mankind's character? How would you tell? It's that? absolutely. 
It is absolutely the way of man's action, human beings' actions. They call the hearts. The Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, inshallah we explain that in the sessions coming. The Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, he said the heart is like, a, you know, it demonstrated, he said like, a, you know, like a white plain um, thing, white. He said, whenever a man, human being commits sin, whenever we commit sins, a stain will, you know, will, the, 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 they will have a stain on their, in their heart based on the level of the sins they have committed. And as we continue, continue, the more they commit sin, the more occupied the heart will be with stains, right? And when the heart has become occupied with that dark stain, in that, when you reach that level, it's will not, it doesn't, it doesn't benefit from the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In other words, the words of Allah does not make any impact in that heart. And Allah described that heart in the Quran, in Surah Al-Mutafif. He said, Kalla bal rana ala ma kanu He said, their heart has got the ran. That's what Allah called ran, disdained. Disdained. Because of their actions, their deeds. And the closer you are to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the more um, obedience you are to the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the softer your heart will be. Right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran, the meaning, he said, whosoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wishes or wants good for them, he softens their hearts. He softens their hearts in the deen and to do the good. So that is um, a result of man's action. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. best. Um, I'll take the final uh, question now, inshallah, then we... Uh, uh, final question. Uh, we've got one in the chat to say, is it okay to give sadaqa out of your free will without being told by anyone? Absolutely. That's the best. You don't need to be told. You don't need to be encouraged only to give sadaqah. You as a believer, brothers and sisters, you must sit there. You think of helping the needy. You think of helping the poor. You think of giving sadaqah somewhere else to those who deserve it. This is a good sign that you are closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's a tawfiq. There are brothers and sisters, mashallah. They have wealth. They have money. But when it comes to giving, it becomes so difficult, especially when it comes, you know, comes to giving for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it becomes difficult for them because Allah did not give them the tawfiq. While others, when it comes to um, giving for shaitan, mashallah, they can give thousands. They can give thousands without hesitating at all. But when you say about Allah, build a mosque, they said, ah, Sheikh Dawar, inshallah, I will build a mask. When it comes to shaitan, they are ready to give thousands. That is the sign of them deviating from the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it's a very good initiative. I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easier for myself and all of you and then make us be amongst those who give for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah knows best. Amen. Well, I think we will come now to the end of our session tonight. No. Thank you very much for um, um, listening to me. And um, um, I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepts this for myself and you all. Um, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make all of us be amongst the dwellers of Al Jannah. Whatsoever mistakes we've done, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive all of us. Keep smiling. Indeed, Allah knows. Deep down my heart, I love you all for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's believers.